Ooh, war. Yeah, so yeah, we, we, we were kind of on the on the verge of that with one of our previous decisions. So where do we stand now? Why well, we stand at war, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for Imperator Rome. It's been a while since we've been able to stream, and I'm glad to be back with you. My name is Troy Pruitt, I'm the Community Manager here at Paradox for Imperator Rome. Uh, with us today we have Roger, who is one of the programmers for the game. Uh, everybody, say hello to Roger. Hi, um, I'm Roger. Some of you might know me as Sir Rogers. I've been on the Imperator team since January, and I'm very much looking forward to showcasing some of the many changes that we've done for, for 1.5. And I'll hand you back to Troy. Yeah. So today we're going to be covering, like he said, the Menander update, as well as some of the fixes, uh, some of the mechanic changes, as well as some of the details that we've updated and looked into due to the community feedback that we've received and going forward with the patches moving into the future to make the game as fun, interactable, and solid as possible. Um, I'll be showcasing Rome to showcase some of our features. My personal favorite, I just want to throw it in there, is right down here in India is the little country of I. That I like to play because you're surrounded by countries that are much bigger than you and always pray sense a nice challenge for the players. Moving on, we'll go back to Rome. Um, I want to showcase a few of the things that we have done um, that's very visible for Rome, mainly the cultures. We have a completely new culture UI where you can see all the various cultures in the game that have been there before. Um, for example, we have our lovely neighbors here. Um, Etruria, they harbor many Etruscans, which you already have while you start in Rome. There's 21 of them, as you can see here. But if you click this button here, you get to the culture map, and you can also see them on the map. So because with the culture changes, you can now integrate different cultures and plan out your conquest. This map mode helps you in planning this out. So if you see here, the Etruscans are not a majority culture, because you can see the majority cultures. Um, oh, hold on. I'm clicking over here. So here you can see that Etruscan is over here and Opia Web Lepontic. But actually, there's a lot of um, Etrurian pops over here that you want to conquer. Yep. So it's much faster to integrate them when they're small in your country. So if you plan to conquer them, you might want to go over here to the civic rights and you might want to integrate them and make them nobles. This costs something. This costs you integrated culture happiness. We'll talk about that. But this also makes it a lot easier for you to conquer them without suffering the short-term penalties. Yep, so culture is one of the most important features in the game. Uh, since the latest updates, uh, you want to just break down the cultures for us um, on a bit-by-bit on a -bit basis right there? Um, yeah, sure. So you have your primary culture happiness over here, which determines um, integrated culture, primary culture happiness, which will be uh, uh, your important pops, which is where you draw resources from but we have three different categories of pops we have your integrated cultures then we have the non-integrated cultures which let's see here they're cross and non-integrated you can do things with them for example you can found a colony that means roman pops will go over there to make assimilation faster and convert them to roman pops quicker this will help you paint the map in your color and your culture but more than that it gives happiness to those pops and there's other modifiers, like you take a penalty to slave output, but in general, the entire culture will be 6% more happy. So this helps you when you're trying to conquer the map to make sure that they're not all going to revolt against you. It tries to bring some stability into the empire. There's a cost to these, so you have to carefully weigh when you make the decisions. And for those, uh, all... for those not familiar with the game or, you know, just learning the mechanic for culture, uh, what's some of the easiest ways or best ways to gain culture or to build your culture count? Over time, um, you will see, I was just going to show you, we have a new pop type, those are the nobles mm -hmm. that we've introduced at 1.5. Um, we'll address what you just talked about by going over to provinces. So in the provinces, you have your pops. And... If you click here on the province view and then you go over to view pops, you see that there's um, promotions, demotions going, but there's also assimilation conversion. So you have 100% of your pop cultures wrong. Nothing is being assimilated here. But if we go over here to Ostia, for example, you see there's an assimilation progress. That's because 
Uvia pops there are of Hebrew culture. And the game will convert pops of different culture to Roman culture, your primary culture over time. There are modifiers that can speed this up. For example, if they're the same religion, it goes faster. But cultures that you have integrated, like if you were to integrate Etruscan, those would no longer assimilate because they'll be considered to be like, like your people, an integrated culture. Excellent. So the best, so the best way to do it is to either assimilate them, or into over time, or integrate them with the nobles' pops. We also rework trade. Previously, trades were on a province basis, and now they're they're still there. You can you can have investments to create local trade routes, but also your noble pops and your um, citizen pops. You can see the highlighted. This is pretty cool. The highlighted fields here is what they mm. produce, mm -hmm. and they actually produce trade routes. So. By getting more citizens and nobles, um, which you can do by making buildings that give them benefits, like that give them higher chance, a higher percentage of presence, so they will promote towards that. Means you can also get more trade, and trade is very valuable for your income. If you're looking right here, I mean, it's not big yet. It's only 0 0.74 per month right. compared to the 5.8 in taxes. But I don't. I have zero out of six trade routes used. So if you look here. Just buying, just importing base metals will give me more income. Right. Oh, it's not up. Yeah, that's going to update. But yeah, so you want to have citizen nobles make trade routes and make your country wealthy while you're trying to conquer the world, Excellent. your neighbors. Yeah, yeah. So where, where, where would you like to start today? Are we just going to start building trade routes? Did you want to increase pups? How, do we, oh. how would you normally start a game? How it start? I mean, before we started, I've set up the country just a little bit. Um, I've put up the idea slots here. So our army gets five. Every country has different um, ideas, military, civic, oratory, or religious. And depending on the government form that you are, um, you have an idea set that you match. If you match it, you get the bonus in this box. Mm -hmm. So here my characters are more loyal and they produce, they have, three men have 8% higher happiness. But we've picked out 5% morale because we are Rome and we're going to attack someone. Right. Um, and we've picked up the reinforcement speed and morale recovery. And then lastly, we also have military administration, which means our generals and admirals will be more loyal. That's very important. Because in the game, one of the challenges is to keep your characters loyal. Right. And make sure they don't try to rise up against you. You know, uh, kind of important to keep your uh, your people together and not fractured across the entire countryside while you're trying to conquer other countries. Yeah, and then we're also going to start with the Italian missions. Those encourage expansion, that sounds like a very Roman thing to do, so we'll, we'll start with that. And we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, but... let's, let's hope it goes well, because we don't want to lose any land this early in the game. <laughs> well, with the cultures, what's pretty cool also, because they have this double road where you see the, the majority cultures, but let's go with Macedonia. When you click on them, you see where that one is particularly present. So if you want to have some fun, you click on Macedonia, you see there's Macedonian spread all over the place. And we wonder how those got there. I think Alexander might have had something to do with that. Maybe. Not, Just... Maybe. So the history books tell us. And how has this changed with the, the representation on the visual map? What changes have we made with Menander from previous patches to update the feel and the look of the game? Sure. Well, the secondary map mode for cultures wasn't there at all before. That's something completely new. So you can see where different cultures are concentrated. Because if you look at it, um, if you look closer, there's... It's harder to see. Let's go for Macedonia. I like that one. If you look at it, there's different shades of blue over here. Based on just how many pops there are. Right. So you can see high-value targets for a certain culture that you want to go and conquer. Which I, I think is pretty cool. Yeah. And so... Uh, previously, that wasn't really a feature. It didn't exist in the game. Um, I feel that it gives a more immersive, in-depth feel to the to the maps, and also lets you see exactly where your 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 not only your allies but your enemies' populations are centralized when it comes to different views. Correct? Exactly. Yeah, and that just lets you plan a little bit if you want to target certain cultures. But starting out as Rome, we have seven K units. Perfect. And we want to build. Up a little army, so I think we should recruit a few heavy infantry before we go do any war business. And we should get a commander. 
Today, Marcus <laughs> Fulvius Patinus delivers a polemic against the Samnites. Samnium once more threatens our gates, concealing their ill intentions behind Trojan platitudes. How many more? How many wars must we fight and win before they submit? How many more men, proud Romans, need die before our southern border is safe? No more, I say. The disgrace at the at the Chaldean forks must be cleansed once and for all with Samnite blood. So we have two options here. One of them is, you know, Samnium's days are out there are numbered, yeah. um, gives us the technology, uh, gives us oh the territories and the provinces of Campania, Apulia, and Lucania. Uh, Samnium loses 25 opinion of Rome. Um, so that's that's one option. The other one is a situation that's more complicated, Marcus. Uh, we lose two popularity with the Publius Council. And Marcus Fulvius Patinus loses five loyalty uh, for 60 months, but Samnium gains 10 opinion of Rome. So right now, do we want Samnium on our side, or do we want to go against them? I'll leave it up to you. Well, given the tax, I think there's a simple answer. I think we should only fight, have to fight a single additional war. So yeah. we're going with option number one. Perfect. Keep it, keep it small, keep it simple, keep the focus on them. Perfect. Oh, okay. Oh, so... No. Italian destiny. This is this is for us. Mm -hmm. So Sebastius Castellani Catus calls for silence in the Curia. Roma has prospered by placing her interest first, and the gods have shown their love for her. We are poised to rule all Italy if our petty disputes can be put aside and our strength rallied to the cause. If she only had the courage to seize the moment, everlasting glory and honor would be the least of her rewards. Well, are we going to go ahead and strike and gamble? Or are we going to Take our time. I think we'll we'll want to strike as soon as possible. We're gonna we're gonna go for it. Just right out the gate. I like it. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I think that's the idea here. Um, auspices of Jupiter. What okay. does Jupiter want? Perfect. Um, to ensure support for war and official auspices. Oh, if you want to read, by the way, just let me know. I just no, yeah, no, go ahead, Rod. You got it. From Jupiter, Optimus Maximus, the patron of good faith and the greatest of gods, is recommended by the Fetials. Assurance of victory will hearten the soldiery and boy the people's enthusiasm. While there's no doubt that Roma will be granted favorable auguries, it would not bode well if the priest returned with an inconclusive or Joe forbid pessimistic result. We, we can't right. have. So this, so, is a, this is a very heavy on our, uh, on our, our current uh, mind right now, uh, especially with the 1.5 and 1.4 updates. These are all kind of a little bit different than they were before. Definitely gives us a better view on it um, and different options. Uh, if you would you mind going into that for us, Roger? Sure. I'm. Um, um, I'll just see what we can do here. Yeah. So we can put our faith in Jupiter, and get loyalty and um, political influence, or because the augur is not pious, devout, or righteous, um, you know, we can grease the palms. He's, he's not. He's, uh, bribery has been a theme throughout all of our history, so. That's an option. Grease, grease the wheels. Get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more on, on yeah, the, you know, the questionable the side faith, of decisions. Yeah, put, put, put. You know, tip the scales a little bit and put the fate in our favor, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. I mean, we should be looking into that, but because this benefits us, we don't mind too much. Right. Or you know, the bad augury option, which I don't think we want to embrace right now. No, no, we don't. We like loyalty in our characters, and we exactly. like being popular. That's exactly. So money makes the popular. wheels go round. But I'm, I myself, am very righteous. So I think we will just lay our faith in the gods. And yeah, we are, we are pious. We are faithful. Power. Let's do it. And there we go. Praise Jupiter. We got a good augury. Yes, praise Jupiter outcome. indeed. So we have state religion happiness and morale recovery. Perfect. And we'll gain. Big in popularity. We got 10 popularity for this. And it does last for 60 months, so we can definitely use that. It's not a short-term gain, so we can we can definitely leverage this right away. Oh, wow. there's there's a lot of things happening for us. We 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 got a lot of we got a lot of pop-ups right quick, right? Yeah, right we're getting the pop-ups. This one is pretty important <laughs> because it leads us into another one of the changes in 1.5. Ah, go ahead. Here, you can see it's the Optimatus agenda. The Optimatus are one of the three unique factions in the Senate for Rome. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about that, but every country we reworked um, how the Senate works completely. So now you get three factions, and instead of they now they now have approval that you can individu individually influence, and as long as they approve of your actions, everything is good. But 
with every action you do that affects the Senate in a certain way, the parties in different ways. And if they start disapproving of you, then you're going to start to pay the price for trying to force things through the Senate that they don't agree with. So you're going to have to be careful how you manage your republic. So, so, so we have Publius Cornelius versus Publius Cornelius. I don't know how this one's going to go. Um, <laughs> and you said there were three different there were three different factions within the Senate. What were those three factions? What are, what are the differences between them? Um, let's just get get them in. We'll deal with the event first. Yeah, let's deal with this event. Uh, we can check it out. Yeah. So enriching the elite is once again the agenda of the Optimatus. Yeah, that was. This time they have decided to gather around the head of the Corneli family, Publius Cornelius Barbatus. They claim that he deserves some land as repayment for his excellent service to the Senate. The Popularis are loudly opposing the legislation, as um, it looks like it will be public land that will be given to the Corneli family. Well, so that brings the Popularis into the play, and we'll go over all three in just a second. Do we do we but, feel like they deserve it, or? I mean, this is the thing, right? It's not about what we feel what they deserve. Mm. It's also about balancing of factions. So. Well, this one gives three holdings to Barbatus. Right. It gets us 20 approval. It does give us 20 approval, which is nice, but we do lose oh. 50 approval from the Optimus for this one. No, that's because... the thing, right? It's it's both for the Optimus right. party. Right. The Popularis aren't affected by this particular event. But if we choose the option to go against this and use the console veto, that will lose us 50% approval. Right. So what happened here is this is their agenda. These, these events are more rare. Right. So once per election cycle, a new, a new election happens, a new party may come into power. They choose an agenda. And if they are in power, like you can, agendas you can fulfill on your own volition, and it will give you good standing with the party. Right. Or if they are in power, then they can force it through because they are the party that's in power. Right. And you can then use your consular veto to veto this. But it comes at a very hefty price of 50 approval. It does. It does. And and, it, and we kind of are in a, in a bad position because this is only a one-party situation, right? Only the optimates are interested in this. So either we, we're their friend by a little or we're a big-time enemy. Yeah, and I think it's only three holdings. So I think we'll give it, give them this little win. Okay. And this Let's will bump up our approval. Uh, as you can see, we're at previous 51, so now we're at 63% approval. And you can see breakdown here, which is pretty nice. Let's go over those. So, we have the Optimatus here. Right, which we just discussed. Yeah. We have the Popularis, mm -hmm. which are against all of this. Um, <laughs> Apparently. And the Pony, which is more like a civic faction. Right. Kind and of sits in the middle and, and decides what's better for the, the population as a whole, not one faction or the other. Yeah, and um, so these give different bonuses. Um when the ruler did, so if, if the if the ruler belongs to them, mm -hmm. but generally we'll see when we declare war. For example, here, let's go back. Yeah, so all of these actions, not all of them, but a lot of these actions have an effect on parties. Right, so when right. you declare war, you see the, the Boni are not for that, but the Popular is like, yeah, war, let's let's go right, get them. Right. So and then some like demand military access. This doesn't affect any factions. Right. So it depends on what the action is if that would affect. Um, the factions they are different that way and if it makes sense that's what's great about our game right all of this can be modded yeah so models can go and create a mod and make new factions have different actions that affect factions differently so it can be completely played around with but ooh, war yeah, so, I think yeah we, about... we, we were kind of on the on the verge of that with one of our previous decisions so where do we stand now <sighs> Why? We stand at war, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can build up some more trade before we do this. I want to make sure we can like get some valuable trade goods like cloth. That's looking nice. Everybody which is one likes good cloth, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to maybe... Oh, we have some base metals here. Yeah. From our yeah. good friends. Now, now we're friends. North. Now they like us. Yeah. <laughs> we, we will see how long that will last. Oh, and precious metals. We like those from Macedon. Well, now we're at war. With we are. All of our neighbors. We are. Ooh, That's they've, good. They've, they've defeated. Oh, more feuds. No. Um, I think Sabinia will be erased from history. That, that's how this is going. Well, I think all of these events lead to certain scenes. I mean, we're, we're already at war. I, I guess we should just keep going, right? Like. Yeah. Who cares if everyone is our enemy? We are running. I mean, as the event says, the Sabines colluded with the Samnites. 
therefore they are clearly evil. Well, clearly, uh, yeah, easy. That's an easy yep. choice. That's how this goes. I mean, so we, we, we just really, really hate what... Sam Knight for some reason today. Uh, oh, that was a great victory. Oh. We over enemy. We enemy. All the troops. Let's see, Quintus, proud son of noble Orgunius, speaks in the Curia Hostilia. The might of Rome. His tales of our ancestors' greatest victories at exhort the Senate to match their achievements. Before, with twinkling eye, he delivers a heartful appeal to ensure our enemies never be given the opportunity to threaten the sacred republic of our ancestors. Taxtatic at Tors and much trashing of Torres. They are really excited about this. Yay. Huh. Ooh, and so will our armies be. Look at this. 5% morale. Just Which... by letting the time speak. Yeah, especially if we're at war, like, man, five morale that is for, for armies. Very helpful. Yeah. That is that is huge. Yeah, I mean that is a very skilled orator over there. Yeah, no joke. Um, we'll accept this trade because it's gonna make us a bunch of money. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's easy. Yes, please give us your money. And that was a great victory once more. Hooray! The trust contract. I mean, we are trading with them. Hmm. Let, let's see what the people say. Hmm. All as Virginius rises, clearing his throat vigorously. The Etruscan city-states have proved time and again their hostility to Rome. At every turn they collude with the Umbrian Samnites, and Samnites like snakes. Our great victory at Lacus Videmo has revealed their weakness. They arrive for invasion. Man, like, we will lose our trade route. That is true, right? Like, but... On the other hand, they have also collaborated with the Samnites. Right, and we hate the Samnites. Yeah, and that can't be forgiven. I'm, I'm sorry. We are Rome. We we must continue to destroy those who stand with the Samnites because we really just yeah we we hate the Samnites. That's it's gotta happen. It goes. Yeah. All right. So this is looking good. Very. We have a lot of good. So far. we have little little battles that help us in the fight. Yeah. Which is why it's nice being Rome. And we are capturing everything. This is you know typically Roman. Uh, I mean our our. Our oh, vassals no. here aren't shooting the greatest battles. Oh, no. A threat appears from the south. Yes, yes, yes. It's those sneaky Lucanians hiding here outside of our vision. Well, we do outnumber them. We do have the morale bonus, but we'll see how this goes. They're still putting up a fight. I mean, you got to give them that. They are putting up a fight. They, they are. They are. But they don't seem too eager right now. So maybe if they just stay there. All right. Ascendance of Rome. Rome. The efforts of our more belligerent senators have succeeded in persuading the majority of the Curia, and even the people of Rome, that Italy is ours. Well, of course it is. Well, yeah, it is. The, ca the campus marshes is alive with the cries of our confident soldiers and fresh harispices. I probably mispronounced that. We enforce the gods' ascent for war each day. The end of recent conflict with our enemies in Etruria and Samnium has left our republic as the strongest power of the Ninja, Italian peninsula. Our victory has firmly convinced our feudatories in the value of supporting our cause and has shown other small states the value of being on our side. I mean, you are on the side of Rome or yes, you die. Exactly. It's very simple. Yeah. That's an easy choice if you want to live. All look to us from Samnium to Truria. You see? You see? It, the it will be Roman. They're figuring it out now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they chose the wrong side and they're going to pay. Yes, exactly. So Rome settlers are now moving on their own accord into the regions to our north and east, establishing new colonies, expecting our protection. All look to us from Samnium to Etruria, to Sicily and Carthage, awaiting our next move. Well, I sing of warfare mm. and a man at war. Yes. Also, while we're talking about warfare, pretty important to note is that for navies, for 1.5 to 2, we managed to fix uh, a bug. Right, yeah, we updated the navies and made them a little bit easier to use. Yeah, and plus, it used to just, when when starting battles, it used to choose any ship, and now it prefers non-damaged ships, so that when you have a big naval superiority, you don't lose a few of your ships because they're already battle-hard and damaged, but it will instead be smarter and choose the, the ships that are more durable for the fight. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to our lovely dev team for fixing that. I know that was, you know, weighing heavily in a lot of players' minds. And now that it's fixed, hopefully this changes the stage for naval warfare. So one of the cool things that we changed for 1.5.2 is the peace deal. So I can now, I'm, I'm trying to get all of this right. from Lucania, but then I go to become a subject. And previously, if you were taking any land, 
you could not make a subject, but now you can take as much land as you want and then still turn this into feudatory of Rome, for example. So there's so still you, Romans. Yeah, so you can grow your little feudatory armor without neglecting your own conquest. Right, and now we can worry about the Etruscans, because... Almost. We still have the Samnites to deal with. Oh no, the Samnites. Always the Samnites. But we'll do the exact same here. Oh. Ah. Hold on. Is that the capital? Oh, oh the capital's not occupied. <laughs> oh. that, was, that was what they were capturing while we were down south. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. We've got to siege down the capital. Because I want to make them into tributary. You know, just have them bow to us. Hmm. Veterans do. Mm -hmm. After, After war's toil and hardship, it is with hopeful eyes that the veterans of our armies look forward to retirement. Well, I've got bad news, guys. But a life of rural farming with the promised farmland often parceled out to the most deserving. Uh, recent circumstances have led to great droves of our retiring soldiers clamoring for this quiet life, seeking counsel from their generals and leaders. Gaius Unius Babucus has been appointed on behalf of our generals to negotiate a complex arrangement whereby we might assuage our tired veterans and yield to them some re rewards. Um, we should be very wary of what might occur should we refuse. So we're literally being asked for bribes. Grand. Yeah, I mean, commandos like bribes, don't they? Grand. Right? Um, I mean, how are we doing on, on, on gold? Man, we, we have a decent good. amount. Yeah, I'm yeah. And I'd rather look gold and stability. That's true. That is that is half of our gold, but I'm I'm for it. Bribe away. Everyone yeah. deserves a bribe. Speaking of losing stability, let's go to culture, because Etruria has declared war on us. Let's check out this little Etruscan culture. So, we're going to be taking a bunch of the territory, so I think now is maybe time to integrate them. Hmm. Hmm. Um, before we do that, we take a look at the decisions, um, because this one, colonial location, will slow down integration speed. But these other ones, um, you can see, let's see, which one, this one, protection against torture will increase our speed by 10%. Right to enter legal contracts increases the speed by 10%. Because, and this one also. So because we're right. trying to integrate those, I think we'll quickly enact these decisions here. Which costs us stability, by the way, so you can't just do this because we have a lot of culture. Just You've got to be careful don't. which one you choose. Yeah, because also changes in 1.5 mean that um, aggressive expansion, as you can see, there has a monthly stability change. Mm -hmm. So as it, aggressive expansion worked differently before, now it's more centered around stability. So if you already lower your stability by enacting all of these decisions, and then also expand land, which will then negatively affect your stability, you could find yourself in a scenario well, you have very low stability and it's not going to go up anymore. And you just sit there and slowly watch your country revolt against you. So yeah, that's not, mm, it's not what that, we want to do right now. No, that wouldn't be ideal, I would think. So we want to just take these three so that we increase our integration speed. And then we'll increase their rights to noble. So the default is at Freeman, so that pops of that culture will not promote the book Freeman. When you integrate them, they have they get the right to pr promote to nobles and citizens. And as this big text will explain, there's there's penalties to that. Because you can't just go and integrate every single culture. So you're limited to which ones you can have without having a big effect. And you can see this will progress by 0.4% every month now. So this should come along quite quickly. Yeah, Let's see. yeah. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. We're already at twenty-five percent. Wow, at lightning speed. They just they just want to be like the Romans. I mean yeah. Oh I have a pending civil war, that's not oh, good. No. Civil war. Uh, that's that's bad. We we do not like civil wars. So in thirty three months. However, we could give this guy free hands or we could just bribe the problem away. I mean, easy, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we still have enough gold to, to bribe everyone. Why not pay off the entire world? <laughs> I mean, there's no problem if you can bribe it away. All right. See, just being one. Now the war goes yeah. 100%. So we will sue for peace. And take all of their Wait. land. Clients are tributary. Hmm. hmm. Let's make them a client state. Yeah. They'll be more under our control. Yeah. A little but bit like... tighter reins. Yeah, and as you see, now is Rome where you have quite a bit here in the south. Mm -hmm. that we've taken. So Rome has expanded very nicely. 
Yeah, now we just gotta take care of these guys up here. We'll see if there's gonna be AI attaching to us. Yeah. Oh, oh, we have a mission that we can do. Look at that. There's a alert for a mission. Yeah. Yeah. We can approach the Greeks. All right, let's negotiate with the Greeks. I mean, we have taken trade from them after all. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The first thing you see is demand they bow to Rome. That's quite diplomacy. I mean, that is the obvious option here. <laughs> all right, the modus symptom. The Greeks of Cepheus may not hold the prestige of some of the other Greek cities in Italy, but the Adriatic port and proximity to Rome makes them a juicy enough target. We must decide how we wish to approach the question of Serpentine cooperation. Man, Publius Cornelius just he's just all about war. I love it. It's fantastic. I mean, submission is a form of cooperation, right? And that's it, how that works. That is exactly how that works. Yeah. So the man they bow to Rome, um, you know, see if they want to become a tributary. Because they are weak and isolated, so that's to our advantage. Right. Right. I mean that does cost a little bit more, but we can bribe them. Yeah. <laughs> because we do like bribes. We do like bribes. <laughs> Uh, offer them privilege if they accept our protection. Ooh, okay. That's quite costly, but mm. they Yeah, I, I like bribing better than offering privileges, honestly. Yeah, it's less costly as well. Yeah. On second thought, um, I think we'll just demand. Just a straight demand for Rome. Yep. That's just a naval battle that we lost. Oh, a response already. Wow. Oh, see? The Greeks mm. are way more reasonable than all those rebellious people on the Italian peninsula. See, the Greeks know what's good yeah, for them. Yeah, exactly. Let us hope this is the beginning of a great cooperation between the Sipontine and the Roman people. Yeah. I like yeah. the Greeks. We should, we should try to cooperate with more of them. That seems to be very... Just, just bring the Greeks in. We'll just bring them all in. Just come on in. Doors open. I mean, there's mention of Sipontine were much affected by our threats. I mean, I don't think it was a threat. It was more of a offer, really. Well, I mean... It was a threat, but it was a threat that wasn't really threatening. It was, do this thing that is in your best interest. Yeah, I, I think a threat is a bit of a strong word. It's a very strong word, but we got what we wanted. So so here we have one of the AI armies that have attached to our army because yeah. we set to the house. Because we're we'll buddies. the tactic to bottleneck. Because keep, that fits them, a... keep them pinned down. Yep, and then uh, rapid assembly. Every port. Uh, okay. Okay, because the Carthage, because we got our navy got defeated, there we can now execute rapid assembly. Nice. But, I mean, I don't think we need that. We don't no. so keep army. We no, have... I think we gotta stick with the old ways. Yeah. Well, Roger, we are we are doing really well here at war right now. Um. Uh, we're almost out of time, but I definitely did want to ask you before we went, what was your what was your favorite part of the Menander update? What was it that you were most passionate about during this update? All right. Um, oh, are we out of out of time already? Uh, not quite. We still got a few minutes. We can possibly wrap this war up if we push. Okay. But... No, we, no, we can't. Not in a few <laughs> There's uh, no way. It, There's literally no way. No, no it's not happening. Uh, quite a few countries have joined on the opposing side now. Um, we are fighting. Uh, a little big war now. Just yeah, no, you know, like half the known world. Not a big deal. It's okay. Yeah. Um, personally. Yeah. I think the culture stuff is really great. My personal favorite is actually the small war fix, because you can now further customize your war deals. It was just right. a small fix, but I think it has a big impact in how you split up land and decide to make vassals. I think yeah, that's just yeah. really cool. Make it make it feel more like a game that you uh you know can be at home in as opposed to just painting the map and getting done with you know yeah i mean it was restricting the player from choosing options and now exactly. we've given the player more tools to customize the experience so exactly that's always, that's always a big win in my book and that's what we're going for you know was was to make the game more playable to make it have more of a vibrant feel and with this patch i really feel we we achieved a lot of that uh, obviously in the future we're going to be working tirelessly to bring even more of that to life uh, we're going to enhance the game to the best of our abilities with Roger and our fine dev team uh, but in the meantime make sure that you're getting your voices heard uh, everybody out there 
head over to our forums, check out the website, read our news, stay up to date on everything. We definitely want to hear your voices. We definitely want to make sure that you feel like you are part of this game because you are. Um, we are going to do our best to make this the best possible game for everyone involved uh, moving forward into the future. There's lots of fun, exciting stuff coming up. Um, I know Roger's excited. I know I'm excited. In the meantime, uh, hope you all enjoyed. Hope you thoroughly felt that the update that we brought to you was something you want to play. We look forward to seeing you 